Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another video. In fact, this is going to be a five part series and it could end up being more parts than that because I can already see that my mind is working on it. And what it's going to be about, it's going to be about how we, all of us, can uh, find more joy in the fountain pen and ink hobby without spending any money at all. And so it's been something I've been exploring for quite a while, but I got really started this weekend. I started by um, <clears throat> working, <clears throat> excuse me, on my inks. And that, if you know me, you know that in this hobby, I am heavy on the inks. I have quite a few pens too, but it's uh, fountain pen ink that got me back into the hobby. Uh, when I was a young girl, it was just cartridges and it was just red, blue, or black. And you know, when I found out that, that you could use all these different colors, which is what I was um, frustrated about in the regular gel pen uh, sort of realm, then I really, really got big time three years ago back into fountain pens. So what I'm going to do with this series and today, I'm going to talk about what the tip is or what, what the uh, focus is for the video. And then I'm going to show you what my results were in trying it out so that you'll have at least a little bit of um, inspiration because yours is not going to look the same. Um, I do have a whole, this whole table devoted to fountain pens and inks and all my stuff. And I have another desk that I write at, but I write at this desk too. So I'm really lucky. I mean, I've got an old house, but I've got a whole room where I can uh, work on fountain pens and inks and, and all of my different office-y type stuff. So you may be working out of a, uh, a basket or um, an art cart kind of a thing. You may not have that much space or you may have three rooms for it. You know, we're all going to be a little different and we're going to be different in what we have. So what I did and what the first tip is, the first tip is to totally rearrange what you have. If you want to feel more abundant, if you want to uh, not spend money, I can tell you from experience, gather up all your like items and take a look at everything you have. Now, this works with clothing too, because for nine times out of 10, for most of us, if I told you right now to go and gather up every shirt you own and put it on the bed or table or whatever, you wouldn't be saying, I need a shirt, right? I mean, it's just human nature. We need to see things all at once. So that's what I did. I got all my inks down off the shelf and I, I gathered them up. And then luckily for me, I took a trip out into my own garage because I had seen a little frame out there and I wasn't sure whether um, my husband Manuel was going to use it or not. <coughs> Excuse me. And I asked him, I said, you know, what I really need is to be able to see each and every one of my ink bottles. And preferably, I'd like to be able to reach up and grab it even when I'm doing an ink review. And so it turned out we had exactly what we needed in the garage. Now, my shelf back there that I'm going to show you closer in a minute is not painted. It's not stained. It's not really finished, but it, it is put together and functional. And uh, we use screws to put it onto the wall so that I can get it down later if I find the perfect stain. And I'm not spending any money right now, so it is what it is and, it, and it's happy. It makes me very happy. And it like actually sort of, I don't know, it just totally inspired me to get that, that done. So when I'm working on this, you know, this rearranging, and you could call it organizing, it certainly turned into an organizing, but what my whole intention was, was to be able to look at everything I have differently, change it and uh, display it better so that I could really see what I had. And I'm planned to do this not only with my inks, but with my pens and also with my paper. But I have nowhere near the volume of uh, notebooks and paper and fountain pens that I do inks because I'm an ink girl. I mean, all the way through. <laughs> that's, that's what drove me back into the hobby. So I'm gonna meet you on the other end and I'll give you a little tour of how things came out. Most of you have seen how this normally looks and some of it didn't change. I still kept the shell boxes with my private collection ink samples. Those are ink samples that have already been, they've either already been reviewed or there's no immediate plan to review them. And they, they kind of stayed pretty much in the same place. But the, the whole shelf behind me, that was the real fruit of this exercise. So since I'm asking you or I'm, t I'm uh, you know, suggesting this activity as a way to uh, 
to feel more joy, spend less money, and feel real abundant in the hobby, then I want to show you how it came out for me. And I'll do that each time when I do one of these videos. So, uh, there'll be a lot more to say, but I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> There, okay, so now I've got a little bit of wider angle so you can see from a distance my work area. Um, I have a, a little bit of craft paper put down so I can also work on ink reviews. But this is, this is the main fruit of my labors over the weekend. I ended up, uh, we made this little shelf out of, uh, well there was a little frame, it may have been for a window or something. So we just ended up uh, using uh, one, one by three and a half boards and kind of creating this little ink shelf. And at the top, I put all of my uh, stampers. I just love to use those. And this makes it easier than how I did have it. I, I use them all the time, so I can just grab them. And then I put all of my bottled inks. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it kind of looks, it made me think of my great grandparents. It looks like a little country store with ink for sale, you know. And it certainly made me feel abundant. And it also made me feel like there was no way I needed to order any ink which is how I should be feeling anyway. But <laughs> so that that was uh, the main thing. And then let's see, might as well give you a tour of the whole thing. Okay, so moving over, I do have the little calendar. And like I said before, I have the, the shell boxes. I have eight of them with the colors. And inside those are my private collection ink uh, samples, the, the keepers. And then on top, are uh, this kind of shows the abundance and overflow of... Um, just part of it anyway, of the inks. I've got Ink Flight 32, the Vinta inks, to review or try or however I decide. And then the Pure Pen Celtic set. And Ink Flight, this is Ink Flight 33, the Troublemaker inks. So I've got those ready. And then in the middle here, oh, there's the Twisby inks. I got them right, right down here on the lower platform where I can get to them real easy. They're all swatched and they're, they've got sample vials. Everything's ready. I've reviewed one already. Then here's my Knox and Claire and my little uh, traveler's notebook with my currently inked. That has to be right with my pens and near me all the time. Oh, these in here are my three review pens. It's just an old Clin Clinique uh, container, like pouch, I guess. And this may be the next one that I review. I don't know. It's a purple ink. We'll see. It's a mystery ink right now. <laughs> and of course, I've got my ruler, scissors, some of the things I need there okay and today today it's freezing cold here in texas i've got everything ready to write some more letters i've got one already written and i've got oh my gosh i think six in my pile which i did really well over the weekend writing but i didn't quite catch up that's okay um so moving on let's see i guess we can look at the <coughs> this is my little bulletin board of color and all my kitty pictures and one oh one is a friend's kitty uh, there's up at the top there, there's, um, my, my two, Willie and, and Princess. They're asleep on the couch and, oh, they've been little dickens today. And last night too, because it's so cold, but they can't understand why the heat's not on outside, I guess. Okay, so then moving over here, I didn't really reorganize over here. This is kind of where this stuff has landed. Um, you've seen this years ago. I mean, I, I just keep on with the different, uh, well, with the, let's just look at the labels there. I've got the Lamy, the, um, my tools and supplies down at the bottom, some fountain pens and nibs, um, platinum supplies, standard and pilot supplies. That, that hasn't changed really. I don't have a problem in that area. My big, my big problem that tends to get, um, huge is my inks. So, and these are just, a, you know, a tile for each color so that we can do comparison panels. And, and that's, that's really joyful because those are so fun to do. And I've got, <laughs> I've got so many of them, but that's okay. And then, okay, so here are my, my notebook inserts. They're in there, let's see. We could peek in, but I don't consider that a humongous hoard. And I think that that's very doable. I'm not gonna have much problems with organizing that. It's really the ink. So over here, um, as usual, you've seen this before, uh, each one of my full bottles has a corresponding, um, well, swatch and a little ink vial. 
And then I just have supplies here. Actually, these are all the inks that are waiting to be either reviewed. It kind of tells me, well, you haven't reviewed this yet, so you might not want to just ink up and use it all. That's all, because I may want to review them. <coughs> and they're in there. And down there, there's a Christmas present ink that cannot be used and needs to be wrapped. Okay, and then, um, well, these are all just my watercolors and different things like that. It doesn't really apply. But what I'm the most excited about is continuing to explore this because this was a tip that I first heard about from um, someone who's into makeup and beauty products. And it was a tip that she mentioned about... Um, rearranging your things and it made me think about it differently because I'm always saying I need to organize I need to organize but she was mentioning that uh, we actually need to physically rearrange it see it different and I'm just happy that it came out to where now I can look at my inks and see them all I can grab one off the shelf I definitely see all at once in well well-lit area that I have plenty of ink and then some you know, I could open up a store. So that helped me, and I'm not gonna see it as a negative, I see it as a positive, and hopefully it will for you, and this may not be, I mean, ink samples or ink may not even be the area, it could be pens. Uh, and that's next for me, is getting out all my pens. But I don't know if you remember, but um, I'm gonna pause for a minute just to show you something. Okay, so since I was talking about pens, and I don't really feel, it's not that I don't think I have too many pens, and they can always use uh, reorganizing, but since I found these Monteverde 36 pen cases, I have two of them, that took care of my issue. They always have a home when they're not inked up. This is one of them. Okay, and then this is the other one. So I don't feel the way I do about my inks, where with my inks, I feel like I don't have any control. I, you know, I overpurchase inks, that kind of thing. I did overpurchase fountain pens in the first year, like, well, like a maniac, but, and I have been also gifted many pens, but I just feel like since I found these cases, that, that has been very, very good. I have other places where I put pens. Oh, I hope I'm not showing it. No, nobody's addresses are showing up. Okay, because I was going to get the other one. So since I got these, um, that settled my issue. I, I keep these on a bookshelf, and I have them ready to go. And what I do is keep other pens that are not... Um, Either they gave me trouble or I need to fix them or there's something going on. Then they're over on my tool shelf so that I know that I can't just ink them up. That they've been tried and I need to work on them or there's something that I need to reevaluate. So I haven't done paper yet, but like I said, that was my main paper other than big notebooks. And um, my problem area was ink. So, And I don't know if I even want to call it a problem area. I just know that I want to go forward with very, very clear intention of using up these inks and enjoying them and put curbing that, uh, not just the spending, but the over-acquiring. So I thought that maybe this would help you just to see what this tip looked like in action. And of course, this part of it was not done this weekend. This is something that has just worked. And I never thought I'd need to go to two of them, but I did because... I have acquired quite a few pens that, that have been um, one in drawings and also uh, pen friends and subscribers have sent me pens that I need to work on, try out, you know, further learn about. So it's all fun. It's all part of the joy. So I think I'll end here, but look forward to the next part. We'll be talking about another tip and I can't wait to hear your comments because I think this is something many of us, maybe not all of us, but many of us share this um, I mean, I really admire anybody who, <laughs> who is in a position where they haven't over-acquired um, inks, pens, paper, notebooks, that kind of thing. And there are many, many things we can discuss that, that are, I think, good tips. But this first one, to reorganize or, um, you know, look at your things differently and uh, display it differently, change it around, rearrange it. I think it's a great, solid tip. So, 
I look forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for all your support and uh, welcome to all the newcomers. I've been seeing new subscribers and it's it's exciting. Every time I need see one, I say, oh, a new pen friend <laughs> for all of us to um, talk to and, and uh, get to know. So thank you very much and bye for now.